Welcome to Grave Reload, I'm Anthony, and I want to talk a little bit about OLED and CES on that OLED side of things. I'm going to focus on the TV, basically the TV side of things, that's the panel side, but I'm going to mention some of the monitor stuff too. I think that there's really cool um, panel technology that's happening, and that is starting to filter into the monitor space. We've seen the Corsair Xeon Flex, go check that out if you haven't. Um, that's a really interesting monitor. Uh, my brother picked up a little side monitor OLED for um, travel, which is really kind of cool, really thin, works well. Um, we've also, or I've also seen different monitors come out. Here we have Doe, Spectrum, they're going to have a 1440p OLED as well. There's LG having their OLED monitors. So there's a lot of stuff in the market that's going on. I believe uh, Dell, too, they have a monitor out of uh, Alienware. And that's a uh, QD OLED. It's supposed to be an amazing monitor. I would love to check one of those out too. My thing is, is that as monitors start coming out, I haven't seen one yet, but maybe I'm missing it. I'd like to get a 4K, 144, 240 hertz monitor that I can game on, right? I would start replacing that even if that was OLED, you know, into some of my work stuff. Now, the reason why I'm focused on 4K, one, I like to play games in 4K. Um, on my monitor. I'm not a huge uh, into frame rates as long as it's a playable frame rate. My thing is I like to you know have that amazing image on the screen when I'm playing it and immerse myself into the game that way. So that's you know my point of view there. And then for work I'm a software developer. I do UI stuff as well in that development and I want to be able to test in a 4K make sure that it's scaling all the way from 1K to 4K you know, and I have that good experiences as I'm developing, so that's where I'm kind of going from there. But let's jump into uh, Samsung here first, and they had stuff with phones, you know, on this. But the the cool stuff is, is where they have their OLED stuff, and the QD, you know, they have the new QD OLED 2023, which you know, at least I understand which year it is that you developed this. I have the Samsung S95B. 65 inch here, QD OLED TV, amazing TV. And they said that they're supposed to be, you know, unprecedented color without distortion at viewing angles. I have to say, it's amazing viewing angles too on this TV. Um, not, a, not that I'm too far off screen ever, but it is quite nice. But they're coming out with a new 77 inch. So if you're you were one of those people that like to have the bigger TV, have the space for it. I don't know if I have the space for it, but. Um, Love to try it out. Uh, this is something that you can now put in. I, I, they've made 90 some inch TVs in other panels uh, panels before, so I think it's only a matter of time as they get up there. But now you're going to have the 55, 65, and the 77 inch there. Then you're also going to have displays of the 34 inch and the 49 inch ultra wide. And I've shown that to my brother. My brother, you know, that's something on his wish list to get is a 49 inch. One or one of these ultra wide OLEDs. I think that they're really kind of cool. But they're coming out with some more optimized algorithms with this AI Sense, the new OLED hyper efficient EL material. So they're saying um, you get what about 25% improvement over the 2022 model, and you get about 200 nits of brightness here, um, realizing overwhelming I images, image quality once again. So they're really updating the brightness. You know, kind of. You know, the LG is there too in the OLED space and they're competing with it. So it's really kind of cool to see this competition. I like it. I think it's a, a good thing to have competition, especially in this space. And hopefully it's just going to be driving um, users to have better and better experiences in TVs when they buy them, right? I'm, as when I'm looking for a TV, right, when I bought it, just got my console hooked up, watch movies on it. I want to be immersed in kind of the experience that they wanted me to have with it, right? My next thing is I got to upgrade the sound system. <laughs> got to have a better one there, too, so. But let's jump over into LG. LG, uh, I have no idea why this is stuck open. Uh, uh, we'll just ignore it. But LG's got their new TV lineups. Um, you know, they were the first ones for the large screen OLED TVs. Samsung's been in the phone section there, and LG's been more on the TV. So now they have Samsung's uh, bringing it up with their cutting edge OLEDs. They have, what is it, that uh, OLED M out. We'll touch on that in a, here in a second. 
It's kind of interesting. But they have a latest uh, Z3, G3, and C3 OLED Evo series. And these are upgraded mild models for higher brightness, better color accuracy. And that is something that I can get behind. <laughs> they are, you know, they have an imp improved processor on them. They're Gen 6, A9 AI Gen 6. But, you know, if they're going to keep improving their brightness, their color accuracy, and their clarity over these models, they may not exactly tell it until unless they have a big change. But if you can see it noticeably over the previous model, or really when you're comparing QD OLED to um, W OLED or LG's OLED screens, that's going to be something that's going to determine what people are going to want to buy. And, um, yeah, it's, it's going to get kind of amazing, I think, in the years to come as these technologies keep pressing forward. And you start reducing the burn and stuff, too, with different technologies so you don't have burn on your screens. I think that's a, a huge benefit here as well um, as they figure out ways to reduce, even though you get it brighter, but reduce the power that you have to drive these pixels can't or figure out a way to cool them better that is always a benefit to the user because nobody wants to buy a TV have burner and then have to buy another one either um, but these these TVs are just you know the quality of imaging is kind of amazing right they're getting better brightness um, light boosting up to 70 percent brightness is mapped and controlled pixel by pixel you know LG is really kind of pushing the envelope and I think the QD OLED really kind of pushed LG to say hey we got to we got to push this a little bit more. So uh, I'm glad that, you know, they're there. LG is taking on the challenge, right? They have some amazing t um, response times for low input gaming um, with HDMI 2.1. And yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. But let's look at the OLED M. Uh, this is uh, no limitations. I believe there's one cable that. Uh, takes power and all your data and then you have a connection box that is everything and it's wireless so you need power but then this box can be wireless to that TV so it's you know trying to keep the TV splice clean you know this may be um, I'm sure it's expensive but it's another thing that they're trying to innovate and come in I don't know if this is something for me necessarily because I have a TV stand and everything's on there but it is something that is quite interesting and something that I'm gonna see as they innovate they've had the see-through um, TV they've had that roll-up TV so LG kind of innovates in different ways but it is interesting stuff out there in this OLED space I would like to know what you guys are looking forward to especially if you're gaming in the monitor side TV side, if you're console gaming, heck, maybe you have a uh, computer hooked up to your TV and you game VR or whatever else. Um, VR, it would be interesting to see some of these OLED panels in the VR headsets. I'm sure that's going to drive up the cost, though. Um, but, I, you know, I play on a QD OLED. I have uh, an ISP monitor here, but some of the other OLED technologies, even in the small monitors, like my brother's portable one, are just really good quality. I can't complain about it at all. I tested it out and just play with it, a little portable thing that runs off your laptop. Um, this is some of the stuff that we're going to be able to do, and I really hope that they actually get it out for monitors here. Like I said, I like to have a 4K, 144, 240 hertz, someplace in there, and have that as my main display, and then or multiple displays or an ultra wide with that configuration as well um, 2160p would be would be quite awesome I know we're going <laughs> to have some graphic shots that are really going to have to push some pixels if you're going to do ultra wide with 2160p but I think that you know we're getting there and we're going to have some amazing immersive gaming in doing so let me know what your thoughts are though what you're looking forward to I know micro LED is there also but if we can get an OLED and not have the burn issues that were concerned a few years ago, that's looking like some pretty cool tech here on the horizon to get some really immersive gaming. And uh, it might actually make me want to buy a new monitor. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for taking time to help support Grow Everloan and help this channel grow. I really appreciate it. Until next time, God bless and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.